What we're going to do today is continue our discussion of the Java programming language. So what I'll do briefly is I want to make sure that everyone is up to speed. I'll do a review of what we've done up until this point with Java and then we'll move on and I'll explain some of the weird things that we saw like what static is, right? What packages are, all these terms that you might have heard of. I'll explain what these are in a moment. So before we continue, again, I want to remind you that there is a big difference between Java and JavaScript. Someone tell me one obvious difference between the two languages. Java needs class name. Okay, a lot of interesting. Okay, so one thing that I heard is that with Java, the code that you write has to be inside of, of a class, right? And you, if you recall, the public class that you have in your file has to have the same name as the file, right? So it has to be have. So the file name is the same thing as the class name with .java after it. Good point. I heard something about types, but can you guys elaborate? What do we mean by what? What about types? Types of variables. Memory allocation. Memory allocation. Okay, so both actually do memory allocation. You can't have a programming language that doesn't allocate memory. One does just gives. Uh, Java is more specialized. Allocates a big amount of memory, so you can change the variable or even change the type. And this one. Everything has its type, so for example, integers are allocating less memory and doubling. True, okay. So another way to say this is that JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. If you remember in JavaScript, we could do this. We could say let you know A be two, and then later we could change that to be some string, you know, hello world. And then later we could change that to be an object that has an array inside that has a name inside, right? This is okay in JavaScript. This is not okay in Java. Java is a strongly typed language. So in Java, when you create a variable, you have to say the kind of content, the kind of data that will be inside of that variable. Why do you have to say this? Why is that kind of important? He just said it, by the way. Right, memory allocation. When you say, hey, I want an integer A, what is A? A is a variable, right? Remember, it's like a box. You can put stuff into the box. That box has to have a size, right? Saying it's an int determines how many bytes are taken from memory to create the box so that you can put things into the box that fit. The other reason is for correctness. In Java, if you make a function that's expecting an int, an integer, and you try to call it with a string, you will get an error because the types do not match, right? In JavaScript, JavaScript doesn't care. It says, do you want a variable? Sure, what do you want to call it? Bolos, fine. You want a number? Here you go. You want a string? There you go. If, it, if there's an error, it's your problem. This is both good and bad. It's good in the sense that it gives you a lot more freedom. It gives you flexibility in your code. But it's bad in the sense that it open, gives you more opportunity to make mistakes. Java is very strict. It says, no, no, no. You tell me exactly what you want and I will only allow those kinds of things to go in and nothing else. So, two different ways of doing things. So in Java, you say that A is an integer, and now, yes, I can put numbers into it, no problem. I can put another no number into it, no problem. So now at this point, A has a 7, right? I can change that to a 19, no problem. But the moment I try to change that to a string, it gives me an error. Again, because A is expecting an integer, not a string. Cool? Okay, furthermore, now this, is, this sort of strong typing is found all over the place. If we wanted to make a function, let me make a function here. Let's call it mm, add. Public static void add. Add will take two numbers and add them together. So num1 and num2. And it will return num1 plus num2. One word. 
Why will this not work? Because void doesn't return a non number. Right. Lots of problems with this. First, we're returning, well, first of all, what are we taking? Exactly. We have to tell Java what we're taking so that it only allows that to go into the function. So we say we want to take two integers. And oops, there's something else that's wrong. What is it? You see this? This tells us what the function is going to return. By saying void, you're saying my function will not return anything. But we are. So you can't lie. You can't say I'm not going to return anything and then return something. That doesn't make sense. So what are we returning? What happens if you add an integer to an integer? You get an integer. So we're returning an int. Cool. So now I can call this, I can call add with two integers. No problem. Um, can I call it with a decimal? No. 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 Why? Because, because a decimal is not an integer. Very simple. Can I call it with a string? No. Why? Because a string is not an integer. You get it, right? Cool. All right. So, 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 last time we discussed this notion of a, yes? Uh, like all, all of the arguments are the same type. Is there a way to specify for all of the arguments in the function and not for each function? So let's say if you have like 10 arguments and all of them are integers. Yeah, huh? Can you specify like, that function? No, that's, I don't think, I don't. If there is, I don't know it. You can, yeah, but I think she's asking literally, f not that I know of, no. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Okay, so last time we talked about this notion of a class. Notice every time I make one of these files, I have one of these public classes in there. Well, what is a class? A class is a template. It, think of it as like a rule book. It says, when you make an object, it needs to look like this, this, and that. An example, suppose you want to make an object that describes a person. Remember what objects are, right? They're these containers that have these key value pairs that have values and functions. You remember that from JavaScript? Okay, well you can't, in JavaScript, you could just do this, right? You could just do const a is an object. And then you could add stuff to the object, right? You could say, you know, let's have our A have a name. Yeah, you know, Joe. Let's have it have an age, you know, whatever. Let's have it have a function, like run. And then you would do something like this, right? You could also later modify this. Sorry for the, I know it's looking like crap, but you get the idea. You could also, you could also change person later on by saying person.name should have Joe. You could add additional things. You could say person dot, you know, jump is another function, right? The idea, in other words, you could sort of construct your object at runtime, right? In Java, surprise, surprise, you cannot do that. You have to have rules that tell you what the object is going to look like. Rules that describe what the object is going to look like. So, how do we define these rules? Well, as an example, let's create a class that will define the rules for making an object that describes a person. So let's do that. So let's create one of these rules. Um, file, here we go. And let's call it, you know, person.java. Why did I call it person.java? Because the name of my rule, the name of my template, the name of my class is going to be person. Notice it matches the name of the file. Okay, good. I now have a template that says a person has nothing inside. Okay, so we want a person to have some attributes, right? Well, what are some attributes that people tend to have? Name, cool. So, uh, what is name? It's a string. So let's do public string name. Okay. What else? What else does a person have? Age. Public and age. Fine. Let's just 
just to keep going? Uh, okay, we get it. Gender, but you understand. Okay. Um, uh, let's, you know what? Just let's put a Boolean in here. Public um, is male. Uh, so that would be Boolean is male. Just to have some diversity in our types. So now we have a, str a string, an int, and a Boolean. I think that's enough, right? Obviously, you, you, most likely for gender, you might have a string, like female, male, whatever, but just keep it simple, okay? So we have Boolean. Um, okay, now we want some behavior. We want a person to be able to do something. For example, we want them to say their names, right? You ask someone, what's your name? They say, my name is blah, 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 right? So we have public uh, void, um, say name um, and then that will uh, do system dot out dot print line this dot name huh this what what is this well remember this is a rule book right this tells you how to make a person when you make a person, that person will have all of these things. They will have a name, an age, an is, is male, and a say name. Every person that you make using this template will have these things. When you run a function, depending on who that, which person that function is running in, which object that function is running in, this will refer to that object. If I were to ask you, what is your name? You will say, my name is blah, 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 right? So you refer to yourself. This is the way that the code refers to the object that it's running inside of, to itself. Got it? So when I construct instances of a person, in other words, I have a class called person. I then use of type person. So I use it to make people. Okay. In this example, I've made three different instances using that class. Person describes what a person should have. The instance actually has it. So this, in this case, we said that a person needs to have a name, age, is male, and say name as a function, right? So that means every one of these guys has a name, an age, and a say name. With me? Okay. Now, when I create them, initially, when, you, when the child is first born, what's the first thing parents do? Decide on a name, right? You give them a name, right? So you can refer to not like baby, you know, you say, you know, it's Joey or whatever, right? So that when you create a person, the first thing you do is you initialize them, it's a little weird, with a name, right? You grant them a name. So every time we make a person, let's right away tell them what name they're going to have. The code that will run when you first make something is called a constructor. It looks a lot like a function, but it's a little bit different. So you say public, and then the name of this function, the name of this constructor, is the same as your class name. So person. There it is. Now we want to initialize with a name. We want to create, give it a name when it first starts up. So. Let's give it a name. Now this variable will contain the string that we pass to the object when we make it, right? We have to now set it to ourselves. We have to say my name is now that name. So we say my name, my being this name, is now going to have that name. There. Now, let's actually do this. Let's make people. How do we do that? Well, let's create another class. Uh, to, to, to file, I don't know, sample.java. Okay. And public class sample. And then in here we do, why is this? Public class 
Sam Ventura. The declared package does not, what package? Oh, oops, I put it in the wrong thing. Sorry, one second. Okay, good. Okay, now we do public static void main. Um, our main takes a, an array of strings. Okay, now we want to make a person, right? This is, this is the template for making a person. Do you remember the syntax, how I can use this template to make an actual person? New person. New person. Good. Um, now, why is it giving me an error? Oh, what? You don't have to assign a variable. The arguments. I've created a child without a name. According to this rule, I'm not allowed to do that. If I make a person, I have to specify a name. So, let's give our child a name. Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what else? Okay, now this will create a person. Now let's store a reference to that person in a variable, so we can refer to that person again later. So, we need to make a variable. Let's call it P1. There's a problem. What's the problem? We have to specify a type for P1. What is the type for P1? It's a person. The template, remember, defines what it is, right? So P1 is that. So what we're saying here is that P1 can contain inside of it objects that were created using this. You with me? Incidentally, about memory allocation, this has all the rules that we need to allocate memory. Because if we look inside of person, we see, okay, a person needs to have a string, that's a name, okay? It needs to have an age, we kind of know how many bytes we need to allocate for, for that. A boolean, that's one byte. Um, and then some code that gets sort of referenced over. Okay, fair enough. So we know how much memory needs to be allocated to first create this guy. And then we do. We create a new person, we give them a name, Boros, and we're done. Let's create, three, uh, let's create two more. So let's do person, P2, new person, person. Vargas, like that? Vargas, gangster. Person P3, new person. New <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, so now, we have three people, three people, where, what is the name of the first person? Bolos. Um, this is, what is it, Vaz, Vaz, Vargas. And then name, what was the last one, Mardiros? Okay. So, is that clear? So we're using the person template, the template, to then create people. Three, three different people here, we're giving each one a separate name. Right? Fine? Now here's an interesting point. Name is something that each individual person should have, right? My name is going to be different from your name. Maybe not, but ideally, right? So you, we can be, so if someone says Ruben, 50 people don't stand up, right? Ideally, you want, you want each one to have their own thing. We want each of us to have our own age, right? It doesn't make sense to have one age for everybody. Because obviously we're all different, right? But sometimes you want to store values that actually don't need to be unique per person or per instance. For example, suppose instead of making people, you're making shapes. You're making squares, you're making circles, you're making rectangles. A value that often comes up is pi, right? 
you know, pi 3.141592, whatever, pi, yes? Pi, you don't need every circle to have its own member, pi, right? If you made five circles, each of them doesn't have to have its own pi. Doesn't make much sense, right? So instead, what you really need is one pi, just one. Doesn't matter how many circles you make, they all going to share one pi. Yes? Are you guys following what I mean? Okay, so in that case, well, look at how we make the rules. If we say string name, this name will get created for every person. Every person will have their own name. So how do I say, let's, I don't know, what's an equivalent of pi for people? Something that is kind of constant. What is something that everybody has? Age. No, but age is unique, right? Each person has their own different value for age. Yes. Yeah, but some, what if you have one person that has one ear? Because Language. Art. Yeah, but what kind of art? Are all of these attributes have values that can be different depending on the person. What's something everybody has? Huh? Yeah, but personality might have a type. What? So What's a sode? Soul. Ah, okay, if you want to go down that route, fine. Okay, let's just say we have a soul. Fine. Okay, so... No, but we don't have a collective soul. But even that doesn't work because... But... Yeah, but what if someone goes to Mars? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. They're not people anymore. They're Marshall. Love. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, calm down, calm down. Let's change this to a circle and just use pi, okay? Because I, I give up. I, I, my imagination is not good enough. Just head. What about head? That's Googling hearts. Who Googling hearts? <laughs> Wait, Miropa? Oh, oops, I changed the wrong one. Wait. Sorry, sorry. One, one second. A sample. Let me change person to... Okay, okay. So now we're making a circle in circles instead of people. Wait, wait, wait. I know, I know, I know. I know. Just bear with me. What are some things that a circle has? Radius. Okay. What are some functions that might be useful when working with a circle? Area. Uh, public int area um, is going to return what? Times times itself. Wait, it's two pi r, right? No, it's the length of the Radius squared? Okay, so let's write squared. Public, pub, public int square, which takes a val and returns val times val. Now here we can say square. We could just make this. Huh? We, we, we could have just made it static. Okay, now pi. Let's talk about pi. If we do, oh, shoot. Wait, 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 wait. Public int pi is equal to three point one four blah blah blah. Oh, oops! It can't be an int. It has to be a float. Let's say. Oops! This doesn't work either because you're multiplying times a float. So let's return a float. Do you, let's have the radius be a float too, so we can support decimals. Um, and have this be float. Cannot convert from. Made up. That's like awesome. Double, double. Made up. Made up. Made up. Made up. Ah, this was the problem. This and this. Is everything afloat now? Cool. 
Okay, now, listen. If I now make a circle using sample, right? So I say, instead of people, I'm going to make a circle. Uh, C1 is new circle. Okay, so C1 is now a circle. Ooh, I, I need to give it a radius, right? Well, one thing I could do is do C1.radius is, you know, 5. Right? I can do that. Why can I do that? Because radius is public. What if I change this to private? What would happen? It means I can't access it from outside of the class. Remember that from the last uh, lecture? So how can we access it? Well, there are a few things we can do. One is we can make a public method that will access it for us. So we can say public set radius void set radius, which takes a double and then assigns that to this dot radius. So here now I can say set radius five. <laughs> Following me? Yeah. Look, I have a function that doesn't return anything. It simply takes a value that is of type double, double precision floating point. Then I say this dot radius, in other words, the radius of this circle should be that. That's it. And now I can create another circle, circle two, and set its radius to eight. There. Now I have two circles. One of them has a radius of five. The other one has a radius of eight. Yes? Hello? Yes? You can keep adding. Yes. Now, let's uh, compute the area. So let's now print uh, system.out.println c1.area. And let's try to run it. There you go. Cool? Is anything that I wrote unclear? What, what's unclear? Yes, go. Bobos, well, do you have something? Uh, can you go to circles of travel? Yep. Why is it that, for example, for the set radius, you're not using static? I'm not sure where it was born again. Uh, okay, I haven't told you what static is yet, right? So forget about static. Right now, every time I make one of these guys, I'm not using static. And what happens is, every time I make a circle, that circle has one of these instances. So, for example, radius, right? Notice how it's not static. Every time I make a circle, every circle is going to have a copy of radius, right? Which makes sense because different circles have different radiuses, right? Here's the thing. Now let me explain to you what static is. It doesn't make sense for every circle to have its own pi. Because there's only one pi. Why would you copy it over and over to every single circle? So instead, what you do is you write pi on the template itself. Listen to what I'm saying. You store pi on the template itself, not the instance. In other words, look. Okay. You have circle. That you use to create circles. Yes? In this case, we made two circles. One had a radius of five, the other one eight. Yes? Okay. We put the first one into a variable called C1 and the second one into a variable called C2. That's also clear. Pi, on the other hand, we don't want pi to be on the circle. If we had pi on the circle, we would have this. 
Um, each individual circle would get its own pi. But pi doesn't make sense that way, right? There's only one instance of pi. Why would you put it on every single circle? So instead, we can put it on the template. Watch this. We put it on the template. When you create instances, it does not get copied. It gets stored on the class itself, on the template itself. The way to do that is to call, to call it static. If I say static here, public static, oops, here, there. This means that pi no longer belongs to the instances that you're making. It's now stored inside of the template, not the instances. Are you with me? So that means here, I can say um, circle.py. Bless you. Why is it red? Here, let me system.out.print line. There. And if I run it, I get 3.14. Look, it's not, it's attached to the template itself, not the instance. You see this? So in order to use it, you don't have to create an instance. You can just say template, the name of the template, dot, and then the thing itself. Yes? Huh, okay, that's, look, it's okay. What is this? This is the same thing as writing 3.14, right? So 3.14 times 3 will give you the result. Okay. Okay, so as far as changing things, look, in other words, you can't now say uh, c1.py is now, you know, 6. If you do, you're not changing it on the instance, you're changing the actual static value. In other words, now if you do this, the value for, for C2 is also going to, oops, C2, this needs to be C2. The value for C2 is also going to be 6. Watch. C2.py. You see how when I printed, oh, sorry, C2. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There. You see how it's six? Again, because it's not, it's a shared variable, yeah? It's not per instance, there's one and it's attached to the template. But you can refer to it through, through the instance if you wanted to. Although you usually get a warning, see that yellow bar underneath? It's a warning saying, make sure you understand that this is actually, it doesn't belong to it, it's actually on the template. Hang on one second. Go. Good. Now, okay. Exactly. So when you, if you recall, when we write applications, we write public. What does public mean? You can access it from the outside. What does void mean? It doesn't return anything. And it's a function that is static. In other words, when the virtual machine starts your application, it simply, when you run the application, here's how you run it. After you, you, do, you do Java space sample in command line, right? This is the name of the class. The virtual machine underneath will do sample.main. Main has to be attached to the class you give it. And then it will run your main and your application starts. Does it have to be public? Yeah, otherwise it can't see it. If it's private, for example, you can't access it from the outside, therefore you can't run it. Yeah. Why is it static? Because the virtual machine, if you do Java sample, it doesn't want to do new sample. 
store it into a variable, hang on, uh, sample a, and then do a.main. Why does it not want to do this? What if your sample required some arguments? What arguments? It has no idea, right? So the simplest thing to do is to just say, and this is what they've decided on, and now it's a rule, is you have to have a static main inside of the class that you want to run. It's a rule. But now you understand why the rule exists, because if it wasn't the case, they would have to construct a class, an instance, to then get the main and then call it. But the constructor, what if it requires arguments? What would they do? So any other function except main is not static? No, any function that you write that contains static, you're okay with. So, for example, let's go back into circle and create a static, we created a static um, member, right, called pi. Let's create a static function. Let's do uh, um, public static uh, void say hi. Oop, hi. Uh, system dot out dot print line, yay, or hi. Okay. How can I call say hi? What is say hi attached to? The template, the class, exactly. So if I come here, I can just say c one c one dot say or sorry, circle circle dot say hi. Notice it's the template that contains the, inst the actual function that I made it, the static function. How's it going, Mike? Okay, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I'm And if we wrote circle.py, is something to change the value? Uh huh. You can. I just did it, right? I did. You can do circle.py equals 5. And now pi in your universe is 5. Now, good question. We don't want pi to change, right? In JavaScript, how could you make something that did not change? Const. The equivalent of that... is double. Oh, sorry, final. Double. Final. Final is the same thing as const. So now, here... If I say circle.py and I try to change it, I get an error. Is there a read only keyword? Not that I know of, no. There's only final. Final is read only. Babel Sunka? Inch. Kartan, we have a final of Tarsus to be a Bayman object does. It's a read only as Tarik, or as construct treatment object does. Come to make it better. In a private? Uh, uh, but that's just, I mean, Yerevi, Chigidam, at Maxi. But what I mean, what you can do there if you don't want people writing to it, make it private and just create a get function for it. And then people can't set it. Okay, cool. Um, did this make sense? Do you understand why I can't now change pi? Why? Thank you. Good. Yes. Is there an order to write whether final is before or after? Okay, so I always just write it that same way, so let's let's check. Uh, so you're saying, can I put... Wait. Can, before, like here? It works before static, yeah. But you can't put it after double, I think. I think you can't put it here. Can you? Yeah, you can't put it there. So you can put it before, it has to be between this and this, but with static, you can, sw you can swap it. But in general, my recommendation is always do public, then static, then everything else, or private static, whatever. Actually, private static doesn't make much sense. Well, sometimes it does. Um, again, if a member, if a variable, is not static or a function is not static, it means every time you make an instance, it's going to get a copy. A name is an example of that, right? You want every person to have their own name. You don't want it to be shared across everybody. Pi, on the other hand, is something that it doesn't make sense to make copies because you're only gonna have one value. 
So you store that on the template, you store that on your class. The way to store something on your class is to create it as static. Good? Here's an interesting one. I created a static function here, right? Can I do this dot name? Well, you can see that I can't. Why can't I do this? Because it is marked by me. Very good. What is this? What does this... Okay. This refers to the instance. But this function is running in the context of the template, not the instance. And name is on the in... Oh, oops, sorry, radius. There we go. But radius is on the instance, right? So you can't refer to something from there from here. Because which one are you referring to? You don't know. That's why you're not allowed. Jokes? But you can refer to static from static. That's okay. You can say um, pi, no problem. Um, hang on, let's do system.out.print. Okay, you can do that, no problem, right? Because you're in a static, you're inside the template, and you're referring to another value inside your template. That's okay too. Hmm. I have this weird feeling that like half of you don't understand what static is. Am I right? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Finally, people are being honest. All right, cool. Inchanam, vonsanam, inchanam, vonsanam, inchanam, vonsanam. Um. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's draw stuff. Uh, that's, that always helps. Um, so let's go to the da, da, draw diagrams. If the internet will allow me. Uh, okay, so we want to make a sh how do I explain this differently? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, you have this rule. The name of the of this of this set of rules is called person. This rule will describe everything you need to create a person. It will say that a person needs to have a name. The, a person needs to have an age. A person needs to have a gender. In addition to saying what, we also have to, in Java, of course, say the type. So what type is name? What type is age? What type is gender? Maybe string. Let's call it string. Okay, we can also specify behavior. How do you have behavior in code? It's a function, right? It's code that runs, that's behavior. Okay, so, um, so you have, what are some behaviors that a person can have? Huh? Talk, cool, so um, talk. Okay, and what does talk return anything? Well, it could return a string or it could just print something to the screen. Let's just have it do void and print something to the screen. It, a person can jump, I guess. Um, let's have that be void. A person can, oh, you know what? Instead of having a name, let's have a first name and have a string last name. And then let's have a function that gives us get full name, which returns a string. Okay, let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so this is a template that tells us when we have a person, that person needs to have all of these things. With me? Any questions so far? Okay, now we need to make people. What's a fun way of to make a person here? 
Okay. Let's have that be the head. Let's have this be the body, maybe. Okay. And then let's have some legs here. Do not judge my awesome drawing skills, please. I am doing this in a haste. Okay. What? It's a person. Okay, now. Okay, so we want this to be Boros. But Boros is the first name attribute of this instance, right? The first name for this, this first name for this specific instance is Boros. On the other hand, the first name of this other person is Madiros. With me? So, the first name is not shared, right? Each one has their own personal first name. They're not both first name Boros. This one's Boros, this one's Madiros. Yeah? Okay, they can also each have their own personal last names, their own personal age, and so on and so forth. Is that part clear? Okay, I can then create another one. I can create, well, one more. There. And I can give them their own name and age, and I can keep doing this. I can cre keep creating people using this template. Is that one section completely obvious to you? Any questions up until that point? It's clear. Good. Okay. The second thing is each one of these attributes can have can be public or private. We'll talk about another thing called protected later. Private or public. Public means that anyone can change it from the outside. Anyone can access it from the outside. So if this string first name was public, if it was created like this, anybody, any one of you could come up to this person and go, hey, your name, your first name is now Mike. And now their name is Mike. Their first name is Mike. That's weird, right? You don't always want anyone to be able to modify that value. You also don't necessarily want to give your name away to anybody. Imagine someone comes up to you on the street and goes, give me your first name, last name, age, and phone number. And you go, Ruben Meshchan, and you, like, you tell them everything about yourself. It's a little weird, it's creepy actually, right? So what you want to do is you want to have data be private, but then only access it when you need it. Right? So if you keep it public, that means anyone can go and access the first name of this object. So let's not have it be public, let's have it be private. Let's have last name be private. Now, but full name can be public. So what this means is that the outside, from the outside, when the object is actually created, we don't know the first name, we can't access the last name, but we can ask, hey, what's your full name? And it will tell us the first name concatenated with last name, assuming that that's how the get full name function was implemented. Does that make sense? How would you implement get full name? No one talk on this section. How would I implement get full name? What is get full name? Okay, so it's a it's a function. It takes. What's your full name? It's your first name and your last name stuck together, right? So return this dot first name plus some string plus this dot last name. Okay, sorry for the formatting, but I think you get it, right? 
this function is public, right? So I can, I'm allowed to ask you, what is your full name? You haven't told me what your first name is. I don't know. You know it, but I don't. So, so we can't change the name. Look, the get full name runs inside of this thing, right? What does private mean? It means you can only access it from inside. Jokes? Okay. So, get full name is something that you know, that you decide. You know your first name, you know your last name, you just give me the result. But if I, if I wanted to know what your first name is, I couldn't. But you know it. How's coming, Mike? Yep. Yep. Okay. If everybody, if everybody has the same last name, let's say everyone is Borosian. Like literally, actually, <laughs> okay, everyone is Borosian, right? In that case, yeah, what you would do is you would have this be a um, static. Static. Actually, it's a string. String. Yes. And you would set that to, you know. Yes. And now there's only one. And that Borosian is on the template itself. Yes. So you don't have to make another person to know what the last name is. You can just say template dot whatever person dot last name and it will give you Borosan. Cool. Yes. It's a green public at the final issue. Public at the final? Bukashkati. Final by definition means it's a constant. Vorij? No, private means they can't even read it. They can't see it. Nay. Imanuna Rubena, che? Yete is private by him, do artsness on the tincha. Is what she wants to say. Yet, who's in us poches, elichemasi. Private Nashankuma da. Yes, gidem, do chigidas. Yeah, that private. Final Nashankuma imaluna rubena. Do it out chunas pochelu. Arans finally, yet, who are you asking final name rubena? Do always ask us imijalots, elche, he might joy, joy at starrel. We, so, yes, dara jo. Shunavur, exactly. Jokes? Cool. Um, other questions? Yes. So, okay, so for a function, it doesn't make sense to have a final because you can't change the function. You can't. No, you can. You can okay, wait, wait, wait. So you can't do this. Uh, so circle has a say hi, right? You can't then say, like, circle dot say hi is now equal to something else. Like, you can't. It's not JavaScript. Then syntax chica. But what you can do is this. Suppose you want to take a value. You can change, you can change that to something else, right? This is a variable. I've changed it to six, and now I'm using six. Yes? Watch this. Now I can't. Jokes? Cool. Um, other questions or concerns up until now? None? Okay. Um, how do I explain static better? I feel like some of you still don't get it. Okay, okay. Let me create a math library. Let's call it math.java. What do, what's the first thing I need to do? Cool, okay. So in my math library, I want to have some nice functions like square. I want to have a min function, a max function. You know, just a few sort of mathematical functions that will help me get stuff done. Okay, so I have, uh, let's say, let's write a square function. Oh, let's write a factorial function. Ah, uh, public int fact. Factorial, why not? 
it will take an int and it will return what? How do I write factorial? Or, or a for loop. But okay, let's be cool and write recursion. How do I do it? Termination. Termination case, first thing. If Okay. And what's the recursive case? Cool. Okay, we have ourselves a nice factorial function. Of course not. And you understand why? Because the return is an integer. Yep. Okay, uh, let's r help me write a function that given two values returns their maximum. Go. Wait. Return B. Okay. Yeah? By the way, this is not going to be on the test, but for those of you who are following me, there's a slight syntactic sugar that you can use that looks like this. Return. If A is less than B, it's like if, then return A, else return B. You can do this in JavaScript as well. This is called a ternary operator. So this means if this is true, then do that, else do that. So if you have a quick, short like condition that has two options, you can use this. But it's the same thing as doing if A is greater than B, then you know, return A, else, you know, whatever, return B. So instead of writing all of this, you can just write that. No, because you could all, you could also do this. So this is if, this is else, right? You could then say else if a is less than b, return you know whatever b. At, re, sorry, return b. Else return you know seven. I don't know whatever. Well, if you do this. I mean, it will work, but yes, I like doing this because it's, it's more clear if statement. This is the first value, this is the else value. And then in the else value, you have a condition which has this, if, else. And you can sort of keep nesting like this. Yeah. Do we have nav in Java? A what? Oh, na na not a number. No, you have, but you have errors called exceptions that will get thrown if you do something that is invalid in math. Like you divide by zero would throw an error saying divide by zero. It wouldn't just give you nan. Jokes? And you can't if you think about it because why do we have nan? It's when you try to like divide a number with a string, right? Java just doesn't let you do that. You can't divide a number with a string. It's an error. <coughs> Drugs? Okay. Um, okay, so, but just so everyone understands, let's go back to the simple one. There. Okay. Okay, so we have these two functions, right? Factorial and max. Now, how do I use these two? How can I use these functions from here? Let's get rid of all the circle stuff. Okay, here I want to figure out what, this, what the factorial of 5 is. What can I do? Math is a class. It's a template. What is a template? It's the rules for defining how to make an object. Right? So what I have to do right now is I have to say, 
uh, wait, samples. Wait, 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 sorry, one second. Let me get rid of this. Okay, I have to say new math. Store that into a variable called maybe math. And now I can say, you know, math.min. Or I can say math.factorial of, say, five. Of, oh, it takes a number, six, there, right? These don't have to do with instances, right? You're not going to make five different maths. There's only one math. There's only, you should only have one factorial function. You should only have one square root function. You don't need one for every, every person. If you have a person, everyone needs their own name, yes? But if you have math, you only need one factorial. So what I can do is go here and change this to static. You can't make a static reference to it from a net. See how you're inside of static? But you're trying to reference something that is not static, which means it, it, you have to make an instance for it to, to exist. How about save chayare? Hima noted static the next, save on ank, ahima kashkati. Okay? Guys, it's really simple. Variables can either, and functions can either be attached to the template or the instances. For the template, they're static. For the instances, they're not static. That's it. Is that, does that clarify things? Yeah? Okay. Um, okay. I think we're good. Gossam ha. Gossam yet inherit on this. Het on this et classic et ban. Dukastanas tsunori statica. Ha. Gossam ha. Any questions? Do you want me to review any of this? No? We're good? Okay. That's it then.